an important consideration when asking whether or not you have achieved positive risk balance, in other words, better than a human driver, is which driver are you better than? Well, a typical U.S. number is about 100 million miles between fatal mishaps for human-driven road vehicles. It's important to break down the statistics that contributed to that and ask which drivers do you expect to be better than or which drivers do you want to remove from the data before you do a comparison. In the U.S., it's typical to see 28% of fatalities related to impairment. So in determining positive risk balance, do you want to include the drunk drivers and say you are as good as typical humans, including all the drunk driving crashes, or do you want to be as good as a not drunk, not impaired driver? 26% of crashes are speed related, but it's important to note that this is not necessarily speed limit violations, but rather too fast for condition violations, which in some cases are slower than the speed limit. 9% is distracted driving, 2% is drowsy driving, and it should be noted that some crashes involve multiple factors, so the total adds up to more than 100%. When determining the basis for a positive risk balance, consider which of these categories you want to exclude from the crash data before you do the comparison. It might well be that you need to be at more like 200 million miles between fatal mishaps to compare yourself to a well-behaving, competent, skilled, unimpaired human driver. One of the arguments for vehicle automation being safer is that it has a faster reaction time than humans. Another thing to consider when comparing yourself to a human is the age and experience of the human. If you look at fatalities based on driver age, you'll see that below about 35 years old, the crash rates are quite elevated, especially for under 25-year-old drivers. Crash rates stabilize for middle age and then increase only slightly above 69 years old. A driver that's 70 years old is not so bad compared to people under 35 years old, which may come as something of a surprise. The younger drivers unquestionably have faster reaction time, and yet they have a higher fatality rate. This can be explained in part by bad behavioral choices such as driving drunk, but that's not exclusive to youngsters. Another interpretation is that experience and maturity of judgment can outweigh the differential in reaction time. Simply saying that faster reaction time guarantees safety is unlikely to be true. The real situation is that some combination of reaction time and maturity not to get into dangerous situations in the first place is more likely to be predictive of eventual safety.